Yo, what's good with you? Back in black with another enlisted video. At long last, finally, we are getting away from the European theater. Well, I guess I shouldn't say finally because we do have Tunisia too, but you know, after how disappointing Stalingrad was for me and a lot of people, I'm sure, this will be a breath of fresh air or a splash of cool water considering how highly anticipated this campaign has been. If you guys are new to the channel and you love shooting games just like me, make sure you aim for that like button and shoot that subscribe button as well. It'll help you find better teammates and it'll improve your skill based matchmaking. The first and probably the most important piece of information unveiled to us is that unlike Stalingrad, the Pacific campaign will be available to everyone with no restrictions or stupid full access packs to buy into just to be able to get unlocks to certain levels. A great change or revision uh, to old procedures in my personal opinion because I believe in essence if the game is free to play I shouldn't have to pay to even use guns and vehicles in that said campaign. At that point I'm not even paying to like level up faster or you know for a cosmetically or sometimes equipment wise superior premium squads but rather just to use that particular faction's main weapons which again is dumb and which is why Stalingrad is probably more than likely the least popular campaign in my personal opinion but I'm going off on a tangent so I'll leave it at that despite full access to the Pacific being for everyone there is a little extra incentive to shell out a little more money for the most avid of enlisted players myself included they have a special landing forces pack that you can purchase which will give you two bonus squads for the Americans and Japanese respectively. The first squad is an assaulter squad with one engineer. The Japanese are featuring the Goretsu paratroopers and they are wielding the infamous Type 1 submachine gun which is a precursor to the Type 2 which was in Battlefield 5 and if you have played that game and used that weapon then I'm sure you know how effective and or annoying it is. The Americans on the other hand are featuring the 2nd Marine Raider Battalion brandishing the iconic Thompson, the M1928 version to be more precise with the foregrip. So um, you know aesthetically I know we've seen the Thompson plenty of times in the enlisted so far but it's my favorite uh, weapon of all uh, World War II generally speaking so I can't get enough of it. Although I will say that I wish they put the 50 round drum mag instead of the um, 30 round clip with the foregrip but neither here nor there still an awesome gun to use. For purchasing the special landing forces pack we will also be getting the amphibious tanks for each faction. The Americans are getting the LVT featuring a 37mm cannon. I'm pretty sure that will be effective. I wonder if you can put like friendly uh, infantry inside as well as transportation. The Japanese on the other hand are using the Kachi uh, which is a giant amphibious tank that I guess they didn't make many up but was still featured and it will be featuring a 47 millimeter cannon which will be uh, stronger obviously but it is a bigger and heavier vehicle so it will be slower. Another neat thing about purchasing the special landing forces pack is that each uh, squad will come with highly trained soldiers which is another way of them saying hey thanks for spending some money. What we're going to do for you is that we're going to give you each of the soldiers in each of these squads one off at a max level. So you will only have to upgrade each of them one time and then you will have max level soldiers. Which I think is a, you know, a pretty good incentive to um, you know, spend a little more money. Not only do we get new squads, we also get them basically fully ranked up. So that's nice. Um, if you are on PC, you will have to pre-order this pack before the update drops. And if you are on console, you will have 14 days from the day that the update drops to purchase this pack. If you want to get access to some special camo, camos for the um, tanks and decals that you can put on the tank as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the cosmetics. They also took the time to show off some of the new weapons and vehicle models that we'll be getting our hands on. Like the iconic Type 100 SMG which is Japan's most produced submachine gun. And we will also be getting access to the Australian Owen gun. which. I don't know um, if the Americans made heavy use of that weapon, but it is nice to see a little more variety in the submachine guns and weapons provided in, uh, you know, enlisted in general. So what I'll do is I'll take a second to cycle through all the images of the new stuff that will be available and talk a little bit about what has, you know, caught my eye. 
Another piece of information that really stood out to me was a new mechanic being introduced as far as melee weapons are concerned. This is being called the Berserker Attack and this is in no doubt being introduced due to the famous Banzai Attack that the Japanese were you know, famous for carrying out as a last ditch effort to inflict heavy casualties on the Americans. But this is akin to a bayonet charge from any other game where you will more than likely get a speed boost. Fitting that since, you know, the Japanese typically had a good amount of katana and bayonet users ready to lay down their lives for the Emperor at any time. I'm sure it won't be too overpowered of a mechanic, but still fun to use and pull off considering the theme and era of the war. It's going to be super gritty in the jungles. You can probably run with a bunch of like camouflage through the bushes and slicing people up if you get a good flank. So I'm going to see if I can try to make some good use of that for sure. We'll also be getting some new explosives in the form of the famous Japanese suicidal anti-tank mine which is attached to a stick. Um, apparently there will be a way to master using it so that you don't die automatically upon you know hitting the tank with it. Uh, not only that we will also be getting use of phosphorus grenades which is a step up from the incendiary in my personal opinion since you can use it to not only catch people on fire but the gas can be used as a area denial capabilities as well. And I'm definitely going to be using that to clear out some of those uh, strong points when I'm on the attacking side. So we'll see how that plays out as well. Other than that, the only other information we are getting is some beautiful images of the areas where we will soon be fighting. They didn't give any type of date or time frame besides the word soon. But if they're showing us this much and telling us this much, then it can't be that far off. Anywho's. What I want to know is what do you guys think of all the information? For me personally, this has been very long awaited. I still don't know if I'm going to main the Americans or the Japanese first, but I might be leaning towards the Japanese since it's an entirely new faction. Either way, I'm excited and eager to hear what caught some of y'all's attention, so let me know down in the comment section. If you found the video entertaining or useful in any way, shape, or form, don't forget to aim for that like button and shoot that subscribe button as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Black Guy out.